We're going to walk through an example on setting up a PID controller for a continuously stirred tank reactor, a CSTR. I'm going to come here to the dynamic optimization course and this assignment is under the nonlinear control section and so if you come down here to this exercise you'll see a description of this uh, reactor with a feed and a product. You have um, a going to B, just a simple reaction. It's exothermic, so it releases heat as this reaction takes place. And then um, we also have a cooling jacket, a temperature of our cooling jacket that we can use to try to control the temperature inside our, of our reactor. Okay, so we want to try to uh, maximize the conversion of A going to B, and uh, but we want to keep the temperature within an acceptable limit. Uh, we're going to, first of all, in this first one, we're going to go ahead and design a uh, PID controller. And then in a subsequent video, I'll show you how to do um, linear MPC and then nonlinear MPC. Okay, so first of all, you can uh, click on this problem information. This gives just a little bit more information about, um, about this reactor. And uh, so here in the Simulink, this is going to be the... Uh, the uh, kind of a uh, placeholder symbol for the reactor. We have um, uh, four different inlets. We have jacket temperature. That's the one we're going to primarily uh, be manipulating. We also have inlet flow, feed concentration, and feed temperature. that can be disturbances. Okay, and then out from that comes reactor temperature and reactor concentration. Okay, so this gives some a little bit of information on how to set up a a PID controller and uh, attain, obtain some acceptable tuning parameters for that. Um, okay, and so what we're going to do is, um, okay, and then after we'll do a model predictive controller as well. Okay, so let's, um, okay, so I'm just going to go back and let's download some of these source files. Okay, and this is just simulation only, these source files. Our simulation only it sets up a, a Simulink simulator. I'm going to go ahead and use Simulink for this example. You can also use MATLAB or Python. Um, okay, so if I come into uh, Simulink, I'm going to go ahead and open up CSTR Sim. And uh, the uh, sometimes you get an error if it's not in the right directory. So just make sure you close down MATLAB, open it back up again, or you can um, change your directory. To the correct one. Make sure you unzip the file. You don't see a dot zip here at the end. Um, and then what will come up is um, okay. So it'll come up with the Simulink file. You'll see the diagram. What we'll do is we'll first of all start off with just a step test, just to get a gain and a time constant for our uh, for our controller. Okay. So here I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. Make this just a little bit bigger with the Control Plus key. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and center it here. Okay, so you can see um, the reactor. This is just an S function. Uh, it helps me compute um, the response. If I have those inputs, I have outputs of uh, temperature and concentration. Okay, in this real-time pacer, you can also change it um, to uh, give it a different rate at which you want to simulate. Okay, so um, I have this all set up. Now what I want to do is just go ahead and do a step on my jacket temperature, which is over here. If I double click it, it'll come up with a sliding bar that allows me to change uh, the temperature. You don't want to change this one. This is just a placeholder right here, a constant value. Um, this is the uh, one we're going to be um, changing the temperature with this box. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and um, go ahead and run this. Okay, and uh, what I want to do is open up the temperature plot and the concentration plot. <clears throat> Just go ahead and double click on those. Okay, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll give it a step in my temperature. Let me just do it to, uh, I can use a slider bar or I can just type it in uh, there. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and look at this concentration. I want to try to get it below this red line there. That's the purpose of my uh, controller. Let me come back to here and open up the temperature one as well. Okay, so you can see uh, the temperature increase and uh, due to that uh, change in the jacket flow. 
uh, or the jacket temperature. Okay, so um, when this finishes running, it's going to go out to 10 uh, minutes of simulation time. And uh, when it finishes, it'll pop up a plot. And this plot will show me uh, the response. Okay, so I increased it by 10. Let me just zoom in a little bit just to be able to extract some of the gain and time constant information. Okay, so there's my step and then my corresponding uh, response here. That started right at about um, right at about three three minutes. Okay, um, so I had a step change of 10. Um, let me go ahead and just grab this and uh, show you how to just graphically fit a first order linear model to this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it and then I'll go ahead and paste it in here. Okay, make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so okay, so now I have a uh, just a step response and what I want to do now is just go ahead and fit a um, first order model. Now this one I just need to get the first order model between the jacket temperature and the temperature of my reactor. That's going to be my this is going to be my manipulated variable. Okay, and then uh, this one here is going to be my controlled variable, or a lot of times in PID control is called a process variable or PV. Okay, um, or this one we also call sometimes a controller output or CO. Okay, so we had a plus um, 10 change um, degrees Fahrenheit in uh, cooling jacket temperature, and we saw that this one went from about 305 to 325, so we had about a plus 20 uh, degrees Fahrenheit change there. Okay, so my gain, that's the first uh, parameter I'm going to need. Um, Kp is going to be delta y over delta u. Okay, this is uh, my y, and this is my u, my input. And so that's going to equal 20 degrees Fahrenheit divided by 10. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit and so that's a gain of about two. Okay so now my time constant um, that one is uh, how long it takes to get 63 percent of the way to steady state. Okay 63 percent so 63 um, times 20 so 0.63 times 20 it's about 12.6. Okay, so if if I went up about 12, okay, so right here I started at 305, and then I'm going to go up about 12, and uh, the amount of time that it took to go up 12, that's going to be my time constant. Okay, so that's um, about 0 0.5 minutes. Okay, and that's going to be my time constant. Okay, so for designing a PID controller then, um, one of the, you know, just a basic tuning rule, um, you know, there's a lot of different tuning rules out there, but I'm just going to use KC, that's going to be my controller gain, it's going to be the inverse of my process gain, and then I'm going to say that my tau i, that's going to be my integral time constant for my PID controller, is going to be approximately equal to uh, tau p. Okay, so these are uh, basic uh, tuning rules. If you have a lot of dead time, then they change just a little bit. You make your gain just a little bit less. Okay, um, but let's go ahead and implement these. Um, in MATLAB, we actually implement it as P, I, and D parameters. And uh, P is going to be equal to KC, and I is going to be KC divided by tau I, and then D is KC times tau d, we didn't discuss tau d, but we'll just stick with the pi controller only, and we'll just set that to zero, the derivative term. Okay, so um, if we have our p, that's going to be 1 over um, one over kp, so that's going to be about equal to 0 0.5 for our controller, and then i is going to be kc divided by tau i, and that's going to be about 1. Okay, so let's implement these um, in a PID controller. Okay, for okay for this uh, simulink model. Okay, so 
let's go ahead and start changing this. Um, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller with the control minus sign. Um, so I'm going to have a controller that's going to take this set point right here and then uh, compare uh, from this set point to uh, the measured value of the temperature and then make some uh, adjustments to the jacket temperature. So let me go ahead and just delete um, I'll delete these because I'm going to have my controller writing to that. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and get a uh, PID controller. Uh, so I'm going to go to my library browser up here in the uh, top toolbar, and that'll bring up a list of different functions that I can um, that I can uh, retrieve and use in my. Okay, so I want a PID controller. I'll go ahead and just drop that in here. And just while we're thinking about it, let's go ahead and double click that and put in our game and then our integral uh, time as well. That's just going to be one derivative. We said we were just going to leave that as zero. One of the other things you'll need to do is just limit the output as well. The cooling jacket can't go um, anywhere below 250 or greater than 350 as well. Okay, so that's a saturation limit. Um, and typically we do um, anti-windup method as well. I'll just select uh, clamping for that one. Okay, one other thing we need uh, to do is set our integral. So this is our like our U bias or the initial value that we want our um, jacket temperature at. When we start, I'll just go ahead and set that to 280. Okay, and then click apply. Okay, so there's our PID controller. That's going to be adjusting the jacket temperature now. Okay, so the next thing we need is to be able to compare the set point to um, the process variable. And so we want to get a summation in there as well. Let me go ahead and just drag this sum down here. And uh, I'll put it right here, just connect it up. Okay, so here's my set point. Let me go ahead and move this down. I'm going to go ahead and connect that there. I need to double click this <coughs> and uh, just change this to a negative sign because I need to subtract <coughs> set point from the PV. Okay, so I click apply and uh, now I'm going to bring in, I need to right click on this temperature and then bring this temperature back in uh, right here. Okay, so that's going to measure, bring the measurement back in here and that's going to be set point. Um, set point minus measurement. Okay, and if I want to, I can also clean this up just a little bit by you know, dragging these lines over. Okay, so there's my uh, PID controller. I have a set point of 310. That's what I'm, that's my target value. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll go ahead and save it and then uh, run with the green button. Okay, start of dead zone must be less than or equal to to end of dead zone. Okay, that's clamping. I may have gotten a parameter wrong here. Let me go ahead and open it up. PID advance. Well, that was upper limit. Okay, let me change this to 350 and then to 250 for the lower. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and start that again. You know, actually, let me stop that. I forgot to put my set point back in here. I want to uh, be able to plot those. Okay, so I'm going to bring that in here. Um, I'd broken a line uh, for my set point. I want to bring those back into these plots so I can see uh, the set point and then also record, uh, save the data to a file. Then I'm going to be using for plotting. Okay, so run it again. And then let's open up temperature and just see how well it's doing. So it looks like it's um, doing well right here. Let me change the temperature set point. Um, let's go to maybe 340 and uh, now see how well this is doing. Okay, it's doing a pretty good job. It might overshoot a little bit. Um, actually, it's going to overshoot a lot. Uh, okay, so there it goes, runaway temperature on the reactor. And I think it's going to eventually um, stabilize. You can see the concentration plot as well. The concentration went down, uh, but the temperature went um, you know, way too high. So I think it'll, uh, no, actually it's going to go off for another um, another excursion. So let's change this uh, controller tuning a little bit and see if we can get uh, better performance. 
So it looks like what we need to do is maybe make this controller just a little bit more um, aggressive on the proportional part. So if it starts uh, getting close to this, uh, you know, exceeding it, we're going to um, you know, be a little bit more aggressive in responding to that. But we could also do smaller set point changes here as well. But let's just go ahead and make this just a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to set this to 1. And then let's try to do this again. Okay, um, so we don't want our temperature to go above this uh, 400 level. Okay, so here you can see. Okay, so it might be doing just a little bit better job. I just had started off with a set point of of 340. And uh, let's take a look at our concentration. We want to try to get that concentration below this uh, 0.2. Let me raise this reactor temperature a little bit more. Um, let's go 360 and uh, see what it does. Okay, so a little bit too much. It's a really exothermic reaction. So um, I think what we'll need to do is maybe use a model predictive controller in this case instead of a uh, PID controller. So we exceeded this um, this temperature limit um, right here. Um, and uh, you can see the controller, um, you know, you can see the, uh, this is actually a, uh, con a concentration, it's just labeled incorrectly here. Um, there's our concentration, it went down to uh, these low values, but you can see these uh, frequent excursions of the temperature as the concentration builds up and then reacts again, and then builds up and then reacts again. Okay, so uh, PID controller, we've designed it, um, you know, as long as we stay away from high temperatures, uh, it's going to work well, but we want to try to design something that can work well with, um, you know, throughout the range of operations, a very nonlinear system. Okay, so I'll go ahead and post this solution um, here um, to the course website. It'll be down at the bottom. Um, and then you can grab that and modify it if you'd like.